Curtis and Debbie from Louisiana. You know they moved to Decatur about four years ago, but then just a month ago moved back to Louisiana, the town that they spent, what, 30, 40 years in. And uh, then uh, Curtis's mom passed last Sunday. You all remember that she was here in service with us. Well, there's Josh, and you guys stayed around. Josh and Nicole, that's my uh, uh, nephew. No, my, yeah, my nephew. I always get my nephews and my cousins. My nephews and my cousins mixed up. And his wife, Nicole, why don't you two stand up so everybody can see you and say hi to you. There's Josh and Nicole. So, uh, yeah, uh, Mama, as she's referred to by the grandkids, was with us last Sunday. And uh, along with my mom, they went back to the house. We had a cookout. We had a lot of fun with the kids and grandkids. And... Uh, Great grandkids, and they went back to Pekin, and she sat down in her chair and went home to be with Jesus, just like that. Said she had a great time, just a great day here, and uh, I think Curtis was the last to speak with her that evening, and so it has been a world, whirlwind of a week for us. And uh, I just remember just two weeks ago preaching a sermon where I said, your, your life is like a movie, and you're the principal player, but here's the deal, you don't know when the movie's going to end or how it's going to end. And uh, we're very thankful for the faith that she had in Jesus. So it's sad for us, but uh, heaven gained a very beautiful and a very awesome woman last week. So praise the Lord. Well, uh, in light of that, um, um, my, my week was just quite topsy-turvy, uh, taking care of, of all of those things because now there's a house and all the things to dispose of and, and whatnot. So uh, I had a lot of time to think this week. Not a lot of time to write, and so uh, Saturday I uh, sat down, which is very uncharacteristic of me. I like to write my sermons on like Monday or Tuesday for the following Sunday, so I have all week to think on it and ponder on it and pray on it and then uh, massage it along the way. Uh, But this uh, has been a little different week for us, and so I have just a very brief word I want to share with you this morning entitled, Seasons Come and Seasons Go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. If not, we have it on the screen, I think. Joey, yeah? Look at that. These guys, I gave them all of this stuff this morning. So uh, the sermon title and all, the, all of the scriptures and everything uh, are just fresh off the press. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, time to plant, time to uproot. Time to kill, time to heal. Time to tear down and a time to build. Time to weep and a time to laugh. Time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Time to tear, time to mend. Time to be silent, a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We ask that it would minister to us by your grace, through your spirit, in Jesus' name. Uh, Cheryl and I love uh, to go on vacations. We like Mexico in particular. We've been going for many, many years, and uh, Curtis and Debbie have been traveling with us uh, the last, I don't know, five years or so, four or five years, and it's just been a great time to get away. Um, we do it on the super cheap, <laughs> but we have, where do you go? The cheapest place. That's where we go. <laughs> but it's still a lot of fun because you just get away, you know, from all the stuff and, and, uh, Cancun, uh, the, the sunrise is what you get to see, um, because you're looking out to the ocean to the east. So it's the sunrise every morning. It comes streaming through the room and, uh, the tide goes out. Overnight and early in the morning you go out, and that's the time when you get all the shells, you know, because, and the earlier you get there, the better you'll be, because, you know, that's what us old people do, is pick up shells. It's, it's, it's a hobby that, then when you, at the end of the week, you go, what are we going to do with all these shells? Get thrown back in the ocean. But uh, anyway, uh, and so, so when the tide is out, the tide is out, the, the shells are, and whatever has been washed up is, is much more exposed, and and uh, the sun rises there as they come up um, over the Caribbean. It's just beautiful. And uh, uh, the tide, what do they say, ebbs. Ebbs is when it goes out and then it flows. The ebb and flow, right? The low tide and the high tide 
The sun rises uh, and the sun sets, and as I thought about all of those things, it reminded me of these seasons, seasons of life, like the tides of life, like sunrises and sunsets. They come, and then they go. And you can't do a whole lot to change that, or you can't do a lot to stop that. I mean, you wish the tide would not come in because you're busy picking up shells or whatever, but you're not going to stop the tide any more than you're going to stop the sunrise this morning or the sunset this evening. And so the the truth bomb I'm going to drop on you today, and hopefully it, it ministers to you as it has me, is that God has placed seasons on everything. Everything has a season, including the things you buy at the supermarket, an expiration date. My mother-in-law had stuff in her cupboard that expired two years ago, just because she liked cake mixes or whatever. But everything has an expiration date. Things come, things go. The tide rises, the tide falls. The sun set this morning, and should the Lord not return today, it will set again in just a little while. Verse 6 of Ecclesiastes said there's a time to keep and a time to throw away. And boy, has this hit home this week. As you stand in a house, Curtis and Debbie look at a chair. So do you want that chair? No. Well, do you want that chair? No. But that's not the end of the story. I now have to decide (laughs) what's going to happen to or someone. We all will. It's a family affair. Just because you don't want it and you don't want it doesn't mean it doesn't go away. It still has to go away. And so they took truckloads down to the nearly new where Mama used to work, and they were blessed with lots of clothes and all those things. There's a time to keep. There's a time to throw away. And I'll tell you what's a reality is when you look at all the stuff that you got and the stuff that you got that your kids are going to go, I don't... (laughs) Never a truer statement is, Hearses don't have hitches. You don't honestly take a single thing with you. And even the jewelry that you're wearing and the casket, they take that off. It's not going with you, unless you say you want it buried with you, and that's foolish. Well, each his own. So we just buried Carol's bones this week, which is the same that my granddaughter has coined because she understands that when you die, you're immediately in the presence of the Lord. Well, if that's true, then who's that in that box? Well, those are, those are Mama's bones. Oh. So a funeral, as she's trying to process, is that day that we get to say goodbye to those bones. Funerals are the days you get to say goodbye to the bones because the moment you die, you have your eternity. And she was born on, uh, in November, right around Thanksgiving. So the 22nd is always uh, the day we would celebrate her birthday, and she died on the 20th. And when we were out at the cemetery this week, of course, there's Newton. That's, the, that's my wife's maiden name. That's Gary and Carol's last name. And there's Gary Newton, and there's the dates that he was born and the dates that he passed. And there's Carol Newton, and there's... Uh, 1937, 11, 22, 1937, a dash and no number. Quite stark to see. But I don't know if you've ever heard this poem called The Dash, but it, 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 it talks about that little dash between the two numbers of the, the day that you were born and the day that you die. There's that little dash in between, and it's quite a lengthy poem, but I just picked out two little stanzas I'd like to share with you. It says, for it matters not how much we own the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you and how you lived your dash? And that's what we have, a dash. We say it's a marathon, but it seems as though they're here today and gone tomorrow, just like that. But when you give your life to Jesus, you're living your eternity right now because I already died 
when I gave my life to Jesus. So she went on, but her bones stayed behind. Seasons of life, they come and they go. We just buried Chris and uh, um, Becky, sorry, Becky, Chris and Becky's mom just a couple weeks ago. Seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall. And so my, my daughter, my granddaughter and I, Davina, um, she's just a hoot. I love her dearly. And we try to spend some time together every week, and typically it's Thursdays. And whatever we do, it's because she wants to do it. She gets in the car, and I say, what do you want to do today? And then we do whatever she wants to do. I want to go to your house. Okay, we'll go to my house. I want to go to Subway. All right, we'll go to Subway. Look at that. There's Because they live up at, near Athens off the blacktop. We were driving by them. The bus barn where the Athens school buses are kept. And I said, look at that. There's a big building over there where they keep all the school buses. She goes, let's go see it. I said, all right. We pulled off, peeled off, and we got a tour of the bus barn. <laughs> I said, right behind that red door right there, there's fire trucks in there on one, one occasion. She said, let's go see it. I said, all right. We stopped, and we, the fireman gave us a tour of the, of the firehouse. I said, Davina, you're not going to believe this. There's a dead deer in the ditch. Let's see it, Grandpa. I said, all right. We spun the truck around, pulled down the ditch, and she's touching the antlers. and Lots of Perel afterwards. I mean, don't worry about that. <laughs> and we were touching everything. And she goes, can I touch its eyeball? I said, no, don't touch its eyeball. With her. I have to draw the line at touching the dead deer's eyeball. <laughs> and just have a great time. Last, uh, she's four years old. Last uh, fall was really a fun time because... I always talk about, because you you know when you're born and raised in the land of corn and beans, right? We talk about corn and beans as we're driving around. Oh, look at those corn. She can tell you whether that's a cornfield or a bean field. She can. We talk about the stages. Well, look at the corn. It's not very high, but now you're as tall as the corn, Davina. And she goes, well, let's go get some. So there's no corn right now to be had. It's not the season. So just two weeks ago, it was on a Thursday, She's, and she understands tass, the corn is tasseled out. And, and I said, well, I see some silk out. Let's go see the corn, Grandpa. I said, well, there's probably, you know those little corns you get in your Chinese food? That's probably about what we're going to see. <laughs> but nonetheless, we, we pulled off in the ditch, and we hopped out of the car, and I unbuckled her, and we got it out in the cornfield. And we opened up, we opened up the corn, and, and sure enough, there's a little ear of corn about that big, itty big little kernels on it. And we talked about What's going to happen over the next couple months? The corn's going to get bigger. Because I have video, and we were in the field last year where she actually found the corn. And, of course, we got an ear, and she's in the back seat of the truck where popping off all the ears of the corn. Now, if Hannah would have done that when she was a kid, it'd be knocking off. But it's like, oh, isn't that cute? That's my granddaughter. Look at this corn all over the back of my car. It's just beautiful. How awesome could that ever be? Only the grandparents are laughing, I hear. Right? So I've been thinking about corn, thinking about life. Spring is that little baby ear of corn. Summer is when it's all silked out. If it's sweet corn, you're eating it. If it's field corn, you're waiting for it to dry. You watch from the bottom of the stalk, it starts getting drier and drier. It starts turning brown. Then there's the fall and corn mazes and bales, bales of hay and pumpkins. And, but then it's harvest time. You can't go back. You can't go to springtime corn even if you wanted to. The corn has a season. And so it's drying out. It's old, dimpled, ready to be harvested. Then the planter, the harvester, the combine comes through. Just the strangest thing. Seasons come, seasons go. So, I was thinking of all of that and what I wanted to share with you this morning and Ecclesiastes and the corn thing was just so on my heart all week long as, as uh, it's been a theme of Davina and mine for the last couple weeks. And So Saturday, I mean all week long we've been driving every day back and, up, back and forth to Pekin because uh, that's where my in-laws lived. And 
Uh, Saturday morning, uh, Curtis and Debbie were going to take a trip up. We've been up all week, so they were going to go take care of some stuff with Josh and Nicole. And Cheryl and I had our first moment to catch our breath Saturday because the funeral was Friday and it was just mayhem and, and so forth. And um, so I, Curtis and Debbie pull out and I don't know what time that was, about nine or so, eight thirty, nine o'clock. And I'm, I'm out there and on the driveway and I'm, I, I think I, I, I got to go write this sermon. I don't know exactly what I want to say or how I want to say it. And it's just the strangest thing. I looked down, and at my feet was a dry, harvested kernel of corn. It's not the season. I mean, who finds a piece of dry field corn in July? You wouldn't find that till October, maybe. And then how in the world did it ever even get? right at the bottom of my feet when I've been thinking about corn all week long and seasons. And just a couple weeks before, I'd seen a little baby. No way to see this piece of dried, harvested seed corn. I said, okay, Lord, I guess I know what I'm going to talk about on Sunday. So here's what I'm going to leave you with this morning. Number one, to everything, everything there is a season. From tadpole to frog, from caterpillar to butterfly, from a foot of snow to today's heat index of 105. That's what you're in store for today and you can't change it. You can deal with it, but you can't change it. No matter how hard you wish it was a different season, you can't change it. Nothing you can do about it. Number two, and that is, you cannot fight the seasons. Any more than you can fight the tide The only way you deal with the tide is to go with the flow, the ebb and the flow. And number three, and this is what I want to leave you with, is that when you're in that season, whatever season you are in life, we are all in different seasons of our life. I love the season that I'm in right now. And I think you should love every season that you're in. You know why? Because you can't change the season. And if you fight the season, you end up being an angry, bitter person. And you're zero fun to be around. So whether you're on the cusp of retirement, whether you've got, ooh, a subwoofer under your feet, that (laughs) felt good there for a second. Oh, they're playing nice, sweet music. That's that's nice. So whether you're a a single person, and oh, I got to get married, don't wish your singleness away. Oh, I wish we had kids. I wish we had kids. Don't wish that away. Enjoy the season. Oh my gosh, I'm going to pull my hair out. We got so many kids. Well, I think you asked for them not too long ago. (laughs) I can't wait till these kids get out of this house. You will cry the day they leave. Why are you wishing your life away? Enjoy the season that you're in, Grandpa. I was talking to Curtis just the other day. I said, you know, we only have one season left, and that's great-grandpa. There's not too many that make it to great-great-grandpa. 
And I can't wait to get to great grandpa. But I'm going to enjoy grandpa to the fullest because it's the season that I have. So maybe your parents are sick. Maybe they're healthy. Enjoy this season. Can't change it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. So number three, that is, in each and every season of your life, yield the fruit that you were designed to yield in that season. See, we all run different races. You'll never run my race, and I'll never run David's. I'll never run Norris. We all have different. But we have the same destination, right? Blessed is the man or the woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. What does that mean? Every season. Every season. Then... He is like a tree planted by a stream of water which yields its fruit in whatever season you're in. It may not be, it may not be a really productive season of your life right now. Don't wish it away. Go with the flow. Rejoice in the Lord through that season. Enjoy it for what it is. And just trust. Be planted like a tree by the stream of water and produce the fruit that you're supposed to produce when he says so. As much as an apple tree would want to produce apples in the fall, it won't. In the winter, it won't. Because God has placed a season on everything. To everything, there is a season. And seasons come and seasons go. Some seasons we wish were longer. You can't change that. Don't fight it. Get your plastic surgery. Call the Botox person. (laughs) Make yourself look like you're 20 years younger on the outside, but guess what? The belts and hoses on the inside, they're 60. (laughs) You can put a new paint job on that thing, but someday we're all going to say goodbye to your bones. We're going to say goodbye to your bones. Not so with the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows. Therefore, the wicked will not stand. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked will perish. And so, the final seasons of our life, this dry seed that just so, so captivated me Saturday morning. You know, there's really only two things that happen at this stage, at this season, either it gets devoured up, eaten, never to be seen again, or it gets planted to produce yet a Curtis, Cheryl, Joshua. You really don't take anything with you. It's the people and the relationships that you have around you. That's the most important thing. It's not whether you got the fastest internet or the fastest car. It's the people and the relationships that you sow your life into. That's what lives on in the next season. So if you bow your head with me, I just have a final moment to ask you a question. For you to be reflexive, if you haven't already, and that is this. Number one, what season are you in? And are you planted by the stream of living water? If so, don't fight the ebb and flow of life. Go with the flow. Enjoy it. But it's hard. People around me are dying. It's hard. I don't feel as good. It's hard. Yes, I didn't say easy. I just said you have no choice but to rejoice in the Lord always. 
So if you don't know right now, it's okay. Take some time this afternoon, this evening, as the next perhaps few days unfolds, and discover what season. Everything has a season. Your educational life has a season. Your marriage life perhaps has a season. Your physical life has a season. Your job has a season. Everything has seasons. And the last question is this. Are you yielding good fruit? See, it's not the size of your house that matters. It really doesn't. It's not whether that piece of furniture has a broken leg or your tires are bald. Those are all things that we deal with, all of us. Are you planted by the river of living water and are you producing good fruit? Because the Lord says, we'll know you by your fruit. So with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, those who are watching by television or online, can I pray for all of us together? And you just, you just pray in agreement with me if, if your heart so agrees. Heavenly Father, we sometimes rush through life forgetting, forgetting you, forgetting that people are more important than programs or things. So help us to be kinder. Help us to talk a little slower, to listen a little longer, and to be patient. Help us to discern what season we're in in our life and then to fully embrace it. Fully embrace it. And if you're not planted by the stream of living water, that, what that means is that your life is planted in Jesus. And if... if, if that's hard for you to get your mind around, just realize that in a dry and a thirsty place where there seems to be no way and no water, God makes a way. He makes a way for you to get through that season. And so, come unto me, he says, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You need rest for your soul. You need rest for your body and your mind. I think you do. We all do. In every season. And so, we give you our heart and our mind this morning, Lord, and ask that you would help us to slow down enough to remember what's really important in every season. For they come and go, and nothing we can do will ever change that except for us to give our lives to you. So if you're away from the Lord this morning, come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Come home. So if that's you and you need to come home this morning, just right there where you're at, under your breath, just say, Jesus, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Coming back to you. And then in the season of your life, you'll be able to say whatever season is. We sung this morning, sang this morning, it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Would you stand with me this morning, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, and we thank you for your grace towards us in this season. In this season of our life, in this season that our country is in, this season that this church is in, the season that our families are in, even the seasons that we personally are in, we will put you first. That's our heart. To trust in the Lord always. To give him glory. Would you just lift your hands towards heaven this morning? I want to bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face 
shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.